Welcome to the Cleveland Range Steam Pro Sales Training Program. This session covers making a steam jacketed kettle and is presented by Ron Sternig of Garland, Canada. Here we are at Cleveland Range in Concord, Ontario. Today we're going to take you through the plant and we're going to take a look and see how a kettle is made. Come on through, let's go into the plant. Hey there, this is Jeff Scott, uh, Corporate Chef for Whale Built here in Canada. I have Mr. Ron Sternig, our Product Manager for Cleveland and Combo Therm. Today we're going to be looking at how a kettle is made. So we're up here at the Cleveland factory in Concord, Ontario, and we're going to look at the process kind of behind the scenes on how we build our wonderful uh, Cleveland steam kettle products. It all starts here at the receiving area. This is where all the uh, rod steel, all the sheet metal is all brought into the facility through a loading dock, indoor loading dock. The trucks can come right into the indoors and it's all offloaded here. And then from here, all this rod steel and sheet metal starts to get produced. We'll show you how that's done. All right, Ron, where are we going next? Next, we're going to a turret lathe. Right now, we're standing in front of the, the turret lathe. One of the first things that uh, happens when we come to manufacturing components of the kettle. This is the start of this piece. This is the finished piece. So what they're doing is milling out the segments out of this piece here. So if I take a look inside here at this turret lathe, you can see that it can be a lathe. It's a five component uh, operation. You can mill, you can lathe. It's all done automatically, wow. all done by a computer. Wow. You'll notice here in uh, Cleveland, everything is made from scratch. So it really gives you a sense of pride and ownership when uh, when you get to use a product that's made in Canada here in Concord, just north of Toronto. And you really get to see behind the scenes on how some of the most commonplace items in a kitchen, like a steam kettle or, or skillet, are really manufactured right from scratch. We uh, we stamp the metal out. We do all the work here uh, right on site, right uh, with our Canadian workforce. Here we have a laser cutter. Used to be stamped out. Nowadays, it's cut with a laser. We can cut up to a quarter inch thick of stainless steel plate. So this piece will be going in and it'll all be cut out by laser. of a kettle. This is how the bowl gets spun. My spinner is going to put the flat sheet of metal onto the chuck and then from there he's going to spin that into a bowl. So this is how the kettle bowl starts, this is how the kettle bowl is finished. Didn't take long to turn that into a beginning of a steam jacketed kettle. From here, we're going to do some testing on this bowl to make sure that it's perfect. Because this is a pressure vessel, it has to be perfect. What the gentleman is doing now is he's going to test the thickness of the metal with ultrasound. So he's using the same ultrasound that you would if you're testing for a baby. This is our baby who's testing the thickness of that metal. If the metal has been stretched even one one thousandth of an inch thinner than it should be, the bowl would be scrapped.
So once the kettle bowl is spun, they add onto the bowl what they call a riser. So from here, it gets welded on and extends the bowl of the kettle. This kettle happens to be a 40 gallon KDL 40T. So I know this is gonna be a kettle, direct steam, leg, 40 gallons, tilting. This is an electric kettle. And I show you, there are the elements that you see on the outside of the kettle. From there, I'm gonna show you the inside of the kettle. This is something you'll never see. Those are the elements that are inside the kettle. They're welded into the kettle. That's very important because welding the elements in, make sure that I'll never have a leak. Screw type elements can leak over time. From there, the way a kettle works is I will take this bowl and I will set it inside here. So now once I have the bowl inside here, I'll weld that closed. Now what we have is a gap in there. And that gap, I partially fill with water. That water is heated by the elements. The elements turn that into steam. The steam surrounds the jacket of the kettle. The steam energy is consumed and that steam turns back into water, falls back to the bottom of the bowl, gets reheated and gets brought back into the steam into this area here. This is called a two-thirds jacketed kettle. Here you can see the bowl and the welded riser. Well, this is already starting to look a little bit more like a kettle. This big guy, he's an 80-gallon kettle. You can see the bowls that are around here. Every bowl is a customer's kettle. We don't build to stock, we build to order, and all the bowls that are going through here have already been sold. Here we are with robotic polishing. It used to all be done by hand, now it's all done by robot. So as Ron mentions, this is the robotic polishing section of Cleveland. Now this was the job that was the least favored in the plant and you can see why. Tough, heavy, difficult work and clearly very dirty. I had a tough time getting a nice clear angle through the windows here. But you can see the grinder grinding off some of the welds and then it'll move to polishing. This robot is perfectly fine doing the labor. It does a perfect job and it even polishes to a number four finish smoother than our competitors. It's way more easy to clean and keep polished. These are electric kettles. You remember seeing the elements at the bottom of the kettle over there at the other one? Now what they're doing is they're putting the wiring together. So they're wiring in the contactors and elements, safety thermostats, high limits and so forth. Here we're showing you a direct steam kettle. You notice there's no elements at the bottom. It's just two big bowls brought together and I will insert steam into the jacket of the kettle from an outside steam source. Again, I can tell it's tilting because it's got a tilt arm called a trunnion. And this one happens to have what we call a tangent draw valve. This is a two inch tangent draw valve, which is an option. Here we're going to talk about and show you our gas kettle. The way it works is I have a heat exchanger. This heat exchanger is filled with water. And that water is heated up with this power burner. So now what happens is the inside heats up, turns this water into steam. The steam leaves the, the heat exchanger and goes into the bowl of the kettle. From there, the steam energy is used up, falls back into the heat exchanger, and again gets used up or heated up and turned into steam. This makes our kettles almost twice as fast and twice as efficient as our competitors as we use a power burner rather than an atmospheric burner just trying to heat up the bottom of the bowl. Here we are in the pressure testing area. So once the kettle boils, 
are put together. Then from there, they get pressure tested. So you can see these are water lines that are actually connected to the bowl of the kettle. We check for leaks around the trunnions. We check for leaks around the bowl to make sure that there are no leaks. We pressure test this to 72 PSI. The jacket is rated at 50, so we pressure test it higher than the jacket rating and make sure that there's absolutely no leaks anywhere in the system. How about this baby? A 200 gallon mixer kettle. It's as tall as I am. Something like this you would put into a pit and then be able to work from it from the top down. But these are one of the special kettles that Cleaver Range built. This is a horizontal, direct steam, 200 gallon mixer kettle. countertop kettle line. You can see the consoles here and the kettles will be brought together. So the electric countertop kettle line, you can see here that they're all starting to be wired together so that they end up turning into something that looks like that. We're standing in a testing area. This area here is where all the testing gets done of every single kettle that leaves the factory. This happens to be a little 12 gallon countertop mixer kettle. They're gonna be pressure testing it. They're gonna be testing to make sure all the operation is going correctly. They're gonna make sure that everything works perfectly before it gets shipped out of the factory. Now we've just gone through the plant. You've seen how steam jacketed kettles are put together. I'd just like to go through this chart here just to reiterate how they operate so that everybody gets a full understanding. You saw the electric kettles or the elements at the bottom. Their elements are submerged in water. The elements heat up the water. The water turns into steam, surrounds the jacket of the kettle. That steam energy is consumed and condenses back into water, which falls back to the bottom of the bowl and gets reheated. If we go over here, these were, you remember seeing our gas kettles, and this has a power burner system where you've got the water on both sides of the burner. This is called the heat exchanger. That burner heats up the water. The water turns into steam, rises and goes into the bowl of the kettle, heats up the inner bowl. The steam energy is consumed, condenses back into water, and falls back into the bottom of the bowl and back into the heat exchanger. In comparison to over here, this is our 25 gallon gas kettle. It is very similar to most of our competitors where it simply has a atmospheric burner at the bottom, heating up a flat plate at the bottom with some heat exchangers inside. This is nowhere near as efficient as our power burner system. But because it's a small kettle, we can get away with that. But because our power burner, which is back over here, because of the power burner that we use with the heat exchanger, it makes our larger kettles, our 40, 60, 80 gallon kettles, almost twice as efficient and twice as fast as our competitors that use atmospheric burners on the same size kettle. At the bottom here, we have a direct steam kettle. There we saw just a simple bowl, and the way it works is steam comes into the bowl from an outside steam source, surrounds the inner jacket. When the steam energy is consumed, it falls to the bottom of the bowl. And since there's nothing heating up that water, we want to get rid of it because the energy has already been used up, and we get rid of it through what we call a steam trap, and that spits the steam out either back to the boiler or down the drain. All right, everyone, that's, uh, that's our tour of how uh, steam kettles are made. We did basically start to finish. I want to thank Ron for taking us through the factory. Um, there's obviously a lot of really cool items uh, in, in how, the, how the units are built, from the polishing to the burner system and everything in between. Uh, Ron, if you want to say thanks to everyone. I uh, just want to say thank you. I want to remind that 
the viewers that uh, Cleaver Range are the largest manufacturer of steam kettles in North America. There's a reason for that. They're the best in North America. Nice. Thank you.